All right, so let me switch over here. We're going to stop that, and we'll switch to this one. Um, move that up there, and we're good. So, in three, two, one, let's go. So, we're, they're just setting up the match right now. So, let's see what kind of a deck he picks. Last one was GOO. Okay, so he opts to, to stick with his Bionic Soul deck. For his first match against Zanpak Cho. Thoughts there? Uh, I mean, it's a solid deck. Like, it can put out so much damage so fast if you're not prepared to deal with it. Okay. So, we'll see how it goes. Let's see what kind of a deck he picks. Oh, there's Triple Varor. And he's not running standard Triple Varor. He's running the Swarmers. Oh, this should be interesting. <laughs> so, th this is oh, Triple Varor. Uh, yeah, that, that is a very, very solid first hand uh, out of Nickel Licker. So, we're seeing... Uh, three warped swarmers in Zanpakuto's command zone. Bast, what do you make of this? What, what do you think of this matchup between Bionic Soul and Three Varor? I have no idea how this is going to turn out because I've never seen a triple uh, Vior Swarmer deck. So... Would you quit saying Vior? <laughs> you gotta keep, roar. <laughs> keep doing it. Don't care. So th th this should be interesting. Once that warp swarmer goes. That's uh, Wealthy Noble, Support Drone, Cornison, and the two followers down. Um, yeah, I, personally, I'd actually probably like Lightning Blast my own thing at this point. T take like out his support. own five three. Yeah, that that would work, and, and you know, start starting to get. There's Heat Wave. Okay. Oh, that works too. <laughs> that that works too. <laughs> that that's accomplishing the exact same thing as those two Warp Swarmers would have done. Uh, so he puts out Luca just to buff up that soul. Oh, no. Undo. Undo. So Cornison out. Uh, three left. He Is he going to use Trading Post? Oh, no. Going for the Splitter Bot. Right. Okay. Not super surprising. No, no. The, this is all... Position. Yeah, the, this is pretty standard so far. I, I'm interested to see uh, how Zanpakuto can recover from this. Uh, at this point, Nickel Licker has board advantage. The best way would be with um, a Hubris of the Strong right now. That's his best option. It deals with the soul, and the board isn't like the support board isn't that big of a deal right now. Right. So, Bast, being as familiar with Bionic decks as you are, uh, how do you feel about Nicker, uh, Nickel Licker's position? Ooh. It's, it's pretty strong. Uh, but that oh. seemed like a waste to me. That. Uh, <laughs> That was gross. That that seemed like a waste to me. It, it would have been a lot more beneficial uh, to get the demon out there. I I don't I don't really see the value in. I mean, I guess he's dropping an annihilate on it, but I mean, the temporal anomaly is going to deal with that. So yeah, I really don't like that. Or did, he couldn't even. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so there, there there's annihilate. That was a really good play from Nickel. So if people didn't catch that. Um, uh, controlled Temporal Anomaly is a preemptive ability. And what that means is it goes off before standard initiative uh, sets in for how the order of abilities is played out. Uh, Nickel Licker played Controlled Temporal Anomaly on Soul, uh, understanding that he only had one life left after the Dark Wish uh, had taken off the, the first one. So uh, he expected Zanpak To to hit Soul with an Annihilate, and he used c Controlled Temporal Anomaly to uh, take Soul off the board before Annihilate would hit it. Really good play. Uh, Mass Death comes out, does quite a bit of work there, actually. Yeah, I was really confused why he didn't put the Soul back out. Uh, worst case scenario is he spends like a Death Ray and an Annihilate again. Well, perhaps that's exactly why Soul didn't go out right there, that turn. Uh, yeah, but it would have put out a lot of damage. I don't know. I personally would have went for the damage, but mm, fair enough. This he's is in a interesting. Good position now. Yeah, he he's still in a very good position. He does have precautionary measures and heaven's assistance in his hand. Uh, Guns of Goliath comes out, takes out Soul uh, for his second life. Um, this is the, the this is looking good so far. The biggest thing is the precautionary measures. Is a really good just uh, like what's it called? Uh, security like blanket. If he really needs it, he can always try to go for the surprise win. Off of the huge boost for that turn. He is he he has now completely switched his strategy to focusing on the sleepers uh, from Ascended G. 
I, I, I'm actually a fan of that strategy at this point in the match. I, I, I like him uh, again. This is what we're we've seen now, uh, twice, out of Nickel Licker, and, and I, I'm questioning whether or not this is the same deck. This is a, a different <laughs> play style. This is a, a different uh, concept from what he's employed uh, in past matches. <clears throat> well, the thing to keep in mind is his morale is getting kind of low, and the spirits have an extremely low morale cost, which is most likely the reason for him doing it like this. Mm. And the precautionary oh, measure is his God. Like that. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that. that's sick. <laughs> oh, that precautionary measures. So that's a GG. Yeah. Uh, that was quite a bit of overkill. Hey, Hart. Welcome to the stream, bud. Uh, that was that was solid. That was really good play uh, from Nickel. He he not uh, again Prozac. This is what you called earlier. Um, th this is something uh, that that you talked about when Nickel was just flat out going to understand the board position. He, yeah, he, he really had a, a good, clean vision of what was going on there. Is he changing nice decks? Too. Nope, he is opting to stay with the same deck. Oh. Um, I'm a fan of that, but I, I think Zanpakuto is going to have to change something up. Um, I'm okay with it. It's, it's a mind game in and of itself, just because both players can switch any time. So it's not as like you can always just assume your opponent's going to keep using the same deck. So you have to plan for both potential like right. potentials. Right. And until he shows them that he needs to switch his deck for whatever reason, he might as well just keep playing it. Yeah. So he's definitely sticking with the same Bionic Soul deck. I, I like the way he's been playing it. Uh, not only, not only has he shown that he's been able to understand board position very well. Uh, but he, he also ha has clearly built multiple contingencies into that deck. I really like seeing that. Oh, is he... He is changing to a different deck. Okay, let's see what this one is. It didn't have a name, it was just titled Z. Interesting. All this right. isn't like a double Z deck, I'll be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they both change decks. Okay, so Nickel Licker is now running uh, FD Mad Monk. Zanpakuto oh. is now running three Warpath. This is going to be a slaughter. That's interesting. I, I, let, let's let's see how Zanpakuto works with this. I I am not favoring Zanpakuto in this. Uh, neither am I. Um, that's that's a uh, that just seems like just not good. Let, let, let's see how Zanpakuto works with this. This is not, at least on paper, this is not a good matchup for him. He, he could have uh, the heart of the cards. <laughs> I don't think he's going to cheat. So there will be no heart of the cards today. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Mark of the Demon comes out on Karani. Uh, likely just hoping that uh, Mad Monk uh, or Yuanshi can take out that Karani before it has any effect uh, on Zanpakuto's tempo. He'll definitely get one use out of it, but it's looking like a board wipe right now unless he can deal with the Yuanshi, and even if he does, the Mad Monk's there, so... Mm. Right, and, and on the next turn, Nickel's going to have uh, initiative, so whatever mm -hmm. Zanpakuto does this turn, he better make it count. So, so Bast, uh, what are your thoughts on this matchup uh, between FD Mad Monk and Three Warpath? Um, it really depends. If Nickel can rush him down quick enough, he can pretty much have this in the bag. But if not, that beat down from Warpath is gonna bite him in the butt. I, I see this as being a very swing match as well. Uh, what you were just talking about, um, the the whole concept of uh, this deck that Nickel Licker is using right now. Uh, relies heavily on being able to keep the board itself under control. Uh, it does not have the kind of damage uh, to overwhelm uh, the cards that Warpath can put out uh, in the mid to late game. So is Nickel Licker going to be able to keep control of the board going into that phase of the game, or is Zanpakuto going to be able 
uh, to mitigate that damage fast enough. So far, he does. Uh, Zepeta does have his um, resources on the high right now. So within the next turn or two, we should be seeing something coming from him. Well, we we also see that that Nicolicker has already used Yuan Shi uh, on his initiative. So this resolution phase is going to be very telling for how the rest of the match is going to go. Okay. <laughs> so th there's an answer to that. Yeah, there's an answer to that. And look at Nickelicker's hand. He has all of the answers that deck can want. And whatever comes in this turn is going to die. Yeah. He has yeah. all of the answers that deck could ever possibly hope for. Okay, so Primal Hunter had enough health uh, to survive Mad Monk. So he has another Mad Monk. He has Yuan Shi, which he's just activated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has Dehumanize. He has Demonic Presence. He has Wholesale Slaughter. He has Demonize and Gather Thoughts. He has quite a few options. Quite a few options. Uh, oh, hi, Scrar. How's it going, buddy? So there's 15 to the face. That's that was gonna solid. That's going to be the only way he can win this match is with the Scryers and... The beefiness. If, and just like if he's playing um, something like Call of the Warpath, this deck actually can't deal with uh, that many creatures. Right. So it's possible he could stall to that point, but we'll have to see. Maybe he couldn't close, though. Yeah. So Gather Thoughts. Uh, I, I believe he's going to pull out Gather Thoughts here on Mad Monk. Uh, the Mad Monk he just played takes out Scrar. Uh, so th this is not looking good for Zanpakuto here. Um, the the damage mitigation has already been done. He does not have the resources from Brings Life by Passing that he wanted. Uh, this is not looking like a good matchup. Uh, Logad, it was not done mid-turn, buddy. Oh, it's not final. <laughs> Yeah, there's a Primal Hunter. Uh, Repair comes out, brings Nickel Licker back to 90. Uh, Zanpakuto is very low on morale. So, Wholesale Slaughter here. Uh, gonna do work. It's not going to affect Zanpakuto's morale. Um, oh. Undo. What is he purifying? He's gonna purify Karani, Primal Hunter. He's already played two Primal Hunters. So he'd only be playing Purifier... Uh, purify to get rid of one. Yeah, like, at this point, it's literally just, if he plays Call of Warpath, stall to it. If he doesn't, I actually don't see how he wins this game. I See, I would have hoped he would have purified yep. Wholesale the, uh, Slaughter. Scar, but... Perhaps. Uh, that may have been a better option. Um, I'm not really sure uh, how, how much work Demonic Presence did there. I'm not sure that card was uh, well-timed. Uh, controlled Temporal Anomaly, uh, or I'm sorry, Controlled Parallel Rift, uh, definitely going to do work. Oh! Hello, Hidden by Clouds. <laughs> yeah, <but> wholesale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if Wholesale Slaughter is going to come out, uh, Zanpakuto needs to play uh, two or three characters this turn and pray to RNGesus. Jesus. Let, let's see if, if Zanpakuto is able... Uh, to dodge wholesale slaughter here. Um, if he can get through this, Hidden by Clouds is going to do a lot of work. I'm very interested to see if he's able to make it through that. Uh, this is where 3 Warpath uh, begins to counter uh, the this FD Mad Monk deck very, very well. This will be two wholesale slaughters down, uh, two so wholesale slaughters down and... Uh, we'll be looking at the beefiness of Warpath now coming into play, while Zanpakuto still has more than half of his morale. Hakim, Karani, let's see what Wholesale Slaughter does here. Okay, it gets rid of Hakim and Karani. Hidden by Clouds is safe, and Untied. Rabid oh, Rabbit really is up there. Actually. That was really huge. Uh, RN Jesus has uh, declared that Zanpakuto will have a fighting chance. Um, Mad Monk was also really, really important. Yeah. 
So he's got... Uh, he, he has Monty Python's Rabbit and Hidden by Clouds out on the <laughs> field right now. Uh, 12 resources. Hidden by Clouds is going to start doing an extreme amount of work now. So the biggest thing here is going to be if he has a scrawler in his hand. If he does, this game's done. Yeah. But otherwise, it's fine. So he pulls out a pack leader with Hidden by Clouds. Um, and that that's that's going to be all he can do. Uh, Hidden by Clouds is going to destroy Mad Monk. Uh, and that rabbit will gnaw at the fortress for two. A calamity! Ooh. It would be too late. Ew. A calamity would ruin his own tempo. I'm not sure Calamity is going to help him turn. here. Oh, if he survives this turn, he might have a he chance. He but... has to shuffle into a dehumanize. That's the only way he survives, pretty much. This is very interesting. I like where this is going. Um, I'm also not sure I like the fact that he has a Vandalize in that deck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying that. I don't like Vandalize yeah, being there. Yep. <laughs> wow. The, the, this is good. This is good. I really, I really like seeing this. It is spontaneous combustion. That's 53. Nickel Licker has three health left. Oh uh, my goodness. Two Gene High Ambush, one Mad Monk um, with 11 resources, the and the Parallel Rift uh, put Calamity back in his deck. Did the Hidden by Quads not pull anything out? Is there no beast left in the deck? It looks like it. It, it oh, looks like okay. Nickelicker ha has milled out uh, the rest of his beasts, so Hidden by Clouds is going to be the only one that has that option. Huh. All right. If he doesn't have any Unstoppable left, this is actually still a game. This is interesting. This is a really good first match. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Mad Monk doing a little bit of work there. Another Rabid Rabbit coming out. Call the Warpath brings out a Hulking Sniper and Drop Bear. All hail Drop Bear. Uh, let, let's get let's get as many Kappas as we can for Drop Bear. Um, <laughs> all all hail the Bear of the Drop. Hakim is in the graveyard. Yes, Doppler. Um, Hakim was already taken out. It looks like Zanpakuto only had one Hakim in that deck. No, this is the first match. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the second match. I apologize. I apologize. It's yeah. understandable. I, that first yeah. match was fairly quick. Yeah, I, uh, I, I blinked and I missed it. I like where this is going. Let's see if Zonpakto is able to pull out a win here. I, I don't see Nickelicker having any responses at this time. Um, if he survives this turn and gets a Calamity, he pretty much wins. All the beasts are gone. Unless right. he has one left in his hand. Right. That'll be the big deciding factor is within the... And he he turn. does have enough resources for it. He did pump. Yeah. So the he, he's going to have to rely on that and hope that you know, he, he's going to be able to make it through. Um, another Gene High Ambush comes out. So that's uh, six blockers while uh, Zanpakuto has six attackers. So that's a, a zero turn. Yeah, it's completely based upon if he goes a calamity right now. If he doesn't, it's game. Right. One way or the other. So a demonize and a vandalize. Uh, that's it. So th this is looking like GG right here. Yeah, yeah this is looking <laughs> yeah. like GG. Yep, there's the GG. <laughs> yep. That's it right there. So, that is 1-1. One, one. Nickel Licker had first match. Zanpakuto has the second match. Three Warpath uh, took out the FD Mad Monk deck. I'm not calling it Mill. I am not going to call it Mill. It is not a Mill deck. Am I not allowed to call it Mill then? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can right. call it Mill because that's what other people refer to it as. I'm sorry. Right. It's not Mill. It acts like a mill deck. Its strategy I'm, I'm is mill not just, mill. Just gonna know you. I'm gonna call <clears throat> it mill. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. How about deck destruction? Does that make you? Is that better? That works. All right. It works. It's very Still slow deck destruction. Uh, but okay. But yeah, the, this is 
so this is oh we're back to uh what we did in match one this is uh bionic soul versus his three warp swarmer varor deck is zanpakuto going to be able to pull it out this time uh lightning blast comes out on turn one against soul uh so soul is down to six four uh one and a half lives so war machine on turn one with cornison uh, that's going to be some very interesting uh, fast ramp into War Machine if he's able to pull out more of those. Uh, but his hand doesn't look like it's going to be uh, feeding War Machine very much. Bast, uh, what do you see War Machine doing for Nickel Licker here? Um, War Machine can produce a decent amount of cards if you have a generation for it. Otherwise, it's going to hinder you if you don't have enough cards on the field or board control to keep it going okay so we we see that uh zanpakuto is running his three varor deck again is that going to be a problem uh for nickel liquor trying to run uh the overseer's rush that feeds into war machine i think it's actually the inverse of that especially because of that guns of goliath early his stuff is now at a point where it it's going to survive heat wave yes which is actually a big problem because it's more than enough stuff to start feeding the war machine and throwing out free units. Not to mention the soul will continue to stay there and be a problem now. That's true. That Guns of Goliath was very big for him. Uh, annihilate on soul. All right. So soul is no longer uh, in the equation. Uh, Heaven's assistance is big there. Uh, Heaven's assistance is huge for that war machine. Uh, yeah, Buffalox, go for it, buddy. Logad, uh, I'm not going to be discussing a hypothetical design, uh, on this stream right now. I've already made that statement, uh, quite a few times on our forums, uh, and I have addressed the concept of that quite a few times on our forums. Uh, this is neither the place nor the time for it. Sorry. Ooh, that was a very nice uh, weapon in the start zone. That's I think I think watching. you're I think you're ahead of me a little bit. I I'm still watching Nickel's planning phase. Likewise. I I okay. So in, in chat, Hart just said uh, he should have annihilated War Machine instead of Soul. Do you agree with that? Definitely. Okay. Why? Uh, first off, he already spent a lightning blast on the soul, so he already put resources into it in terms of killing it like that. But the war machine is going to consist can yeah, can consistently pump out units to deal with all of the other various like things that might pop up. Whereas the soul can just kind of be uh, humbled. I don't know what it's called again. Where it makes the one one and it deals yeah. with soul completely. Hubris. Interesting. Okay, so now we're at a point. Where Nickel Licker definitely has board advantage. Is Zanpakuto going to be able to deal with this uh, early on? If not, it, it occurs to me that Nickel Licker uh, still has the tempo all the way swung in his camp. That is a very good point, the game. Uh, the game says he doesn't want to accidentally ascend soul. That's why he wasn't attacking with it. Um, it's a it's a good point. Um, but I, I I think I think Nichols being too patient here. I I, I think he he's playing a little uh, a little too passive against three Varor. I'm not sure that's going to work out in his favor late game. He's putting a lot of resources into something that produces a single large target against a deck that is very good at dealing with single large targets. Okay, Lightning Blast comes out on the Construct. That'll take it out. Uh, deals double damage against machines. So he'll be fine there. Uh, there's his G, his Ascended G. Um, I'm not... I actually do like the G play here. Uh, he he's he's not really in dire need of of all eight of those resources. He has the capability uh, to feed that war machine sufficiently enough, and he can give himself uh, a little bit of flying poke 
Uh, Bast, what do you see from this the G play? Um, Ouch. Typically... Other than that mm-hmm. mass death. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good thing he didn't commit too much to that assault zone, but right. uh, so far he could use that Z to uh, feed his war machine. Table, I, I probably would have been more on the offense at this point because at this point of the game, you're putting a little bit too much into war machine just for that single card, and when you have this much control of the board, you want to just try and finish, finish as quick as possible. It doesn't get too late. And uh, so far, um, that Z is going to be very useful at this point in the game, especially if he gets the guns of Goliath. I agree. He, he just used Ascended G's ability three times, so that's three maximum resources down. He's now down to six. And we're looking at uh, three six six flyers. Um, I'm very interested uh, in what he's not only going to do uh, with these three flyers, but he has a Heaven's Assistance and Guns of Goliath in his hand, uh, but his opponent doesn't have very much on the board. So Heaven's Assistance is a dead draw for him right now. Well, overall, though, it's the around the same point he played the Z before. When you drop to about the 40 morale mark, the low morale on those spirits is really important. Right. Because playing against Triple Vorora, it's not... Unless you get the precautionary meds or surprise one-turn kill, it's not generally about killing them in one turn. It's about whittling them down and trying to bait out their removal, which is why the War Machine was so good, because even though it's building the single one big card, you can, if you get enough of them out, it's enough immediate threat that he actually has to deal with this and spend cards on it. Right. Okay, fair enough. So let's see what Zanpakuto is going to be able to do this turn got 5, 7, 9, 15, 21 damage on the board. Uh, is Zanpakuto going to be able to take that? Is he... Oh, he activates a Veroria. And plays out a Siphon Structure. Interesting play. So he's just going to be stalling with Veroria right now. Uh, that was a really good bait. That was. So he, let, let, let's I'm talk about the, the Veroria... The, the Veroria field. Prozac, uh, with the change to Veroria, how do you see Zanpakuto being able to, to leverage this? Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Veroria itself, but I was a fan of that play where he pumped and then played the Veroria. It baited out a lot of the removal. I would have expected to oh! play now, which is what he just did. So he baited out the Temporal Anomalies the turn beforehand when... Uh, Nickel thought they would be coming because he pumped the turn before. Played the Veroria to stall for the turn and then Calamity when all of the uh, answers were gone. That was excellently done. That was beautiful. That um, was a beautiful Calamity. That <laughs> really was beautiful. Zanpak To, you, you, you earned the respect of a lot of people uh, in, this, in this stream uh, by doing what you just did, sir. Very well played. Uh, so now we've got uh, War Machine, almost a, a dead card on the field, because Nickelicker now has to uh, rebuild his offensive. Secluded Constructor has no fodder to utilize. Uh, he's, he does now have a second G. Uh, he also has Champion of Ruin. Champion of Ruin is just going to be uh, Poke. So let's see what Nickelicker can do uh, with Ascended G here. Uh, he put, you know, he puts a splitter bot on the field. The secluded constructor has something to work with. Um, so, so let let's see how Nickelicker can recover from this. I'm uh, expecting just a precautionary measures power turn whenever he gets it at this point. Right. So what? Let, let's talk a little bit about Zanpakuto's position. We understand the capability of three Veror to control the board. What is Zanpakuto's win condition here? He's looking to get the Oblivion. That's that's all you have to stall for is just get the Oblivion, clear the board. It's just such a powerful card. Uh, he should be pretty close to it, actually, at this point. You could also try and uh, morale him out, because Nick is getting really low morale. Oh, good lord. Did I say Champion of Ruin? Did, did someone confirm whether or not I said Champion of Ruin instead of Soldier of Purity? You definitely said Champion of Ruin. Okay. I'm going to agree with Bass, because I, I definitely, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I apologize. It, blame the Pepsi. Just, I, I'm hyped up on caffeine. It's fine. Okay. All right. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. So there's Annihilate uh, both, both on the Soldier and War Machine. 
So he no longer has the ability uh, to get the 16-16s out there. Um, Oblivion is definitely uh, what he's trying to build into. This would be nice if we had spectating right now so we could take a look uh, at how many cards are in Zanpakuto's graveyard. It'd be nice to know where we're at in terms of how far away he is from having Oblivion. Does he have Oblivion in his hand? Is he baiting for it? Uh, when is going to be the opportune time for him to get Oblivion out there? Obviously, um, once Nickel Licker has committed to the board, but I'm when does Zanpakuto see that? This turn or the next turn at the latest. Okay. Bass, do you agree with that? Mm, really depends. He might be able to, but I don't know. Another thing is, is if he keeps sending out cards like this and letting them die, he's going to get morrowed out. The, this of, is uh, the thoughts. strength of three Varor right here. Yeah. You constantly have to rebuild your tempo. It, is Zanpakuto going to be able to stop this tempo? Oh, he activates Varoria again and gets rid of Constructor. So there, there, there's the stop yeah, right there. He's so, trying to it. Right, he's he he's using the trading post quite a bit. Hmm. With sideboard, can I change commander characters but without change purity? Nope, you cannot uh, change commanders with your sideboard. Definitely not. That would allow you to change far too much of your deck. I'm excited for sideboards, though. I'm very excited uh, for right yeah. I'm very excited uh, for best of threes and sideboards. Uh, correct, Bert Raccoon. Solus's gate uh, makes the the targets untouchable. Um, however, uh, Oblivion is an AOE for all intents and purposes. So, okay. So <laughs> yeah, it, it will definitely not. Uh, it will not change uh, how Oblivion works or what it will hit. No, you will not be able to change anything about your command zone or your purity, Easterun. It is just the cards in your deck. This is a, a very long, drawn-out match, and I, I like this. This is what Three Varor is capable of. Yeah. Uh, it literally puts a halt to Nickel Licker's, um, to Nickel Licker's tempo. Oh, He's now down to 17 tempo. morale. Yeah, Zompokto should win this game, pretty much guaranteed. He can just consistently stall with Varoria until he gets the Oblivion, and once he gets it... He might get morale out. I'm not sure of the exact morale and everything there. But otherwise, it's just going to be the 2020. is too much to deal with at that point anyway. Right. So there there goes Veroria again. Uh, Dark Blast, two Dark Blast. <laughs> uh, Siphon Structure. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, if he has Oblivion now, then. Yeah, that, that, that was just spamming abilities. Yeah. Um, so everyone knows what that's feeding into. He was literally just stuffing abilities in his graveyard. That's an Oblivion setup right there. Yep. <laughs> what is a sideboard? Um, I would highly recommend going to Google and typing in MTG sideboard. It, it would take a lot longer for me to explain it uh, than it would take for you to see it. There's Oblivion. Oblivion comes out, wipes Nickel Licker's board. That's going and to be a morale, morale out. And that's GG. Yeah, that's game. <laughs> that is what GG. A, what a beautiful finish. It was. Uh, with with a, a very nice purple explosion. Logad makes a good point. Um, uh, he, he states that Nickel Licker lost... Um, at the time where Zanpakuto had Veroria out on the field with 74 health uh, at, at his disposal. Uh, what what do you think of that, Prozac? I completely agree. It's why I always run one location destruction in my deck. Right. And what what do you usually play, dude? Let, let's say, you know, you're running, say, three Warpath. You know, are, are, are you running Rift to the Old World? Is, is it that valuable to you? 
Uh, three Warpath. I think I'm running Walrus. Is Walrus the artifact? I know no, I run... yeah, Wal Walrus is the artifact removal. Yeah, so then I'm running a uh, thing, yeah, always. I have okay. at least one location destruction, Rift of the Old World. Unless right. I'm playing something like GI, where I have the ability to run uh, Cleanse. Do you think... Yeah, I'm surprised uh, you didn't run one, because it's, it's a one purity card, and it's pretty cheap to have in a deck. I'm surprised you didn't have one. Right. So let, let's say, uh, with the advent of sideboards, does a card like Rift to the Old World become more valuable to you? Uh, me? I would still run one in main deck, but I like to have as many options as possible when I'm playing the game. Right. Although there would definitely be another like two in the sideboard for me. Fair enough. So... So Nickel Licker has changed his deck again back to the FD Mad Monk. Um, and Zonpakto has opted to keep his three Veror deck. This is an interesting matchup because Nickel Licker's deck uh, doesn't rely on committing to the board, where Zonpakto's deck uh, relishes on an opponent committing to the board. What do we make of this matchup? Um, it's a little bit swingy, honestly, because inherently he's going to make him get into oblivion faster but it's a matter of how like how much he can mill him out before the oblivion comes out type of thing right so yes really th this is best together. of five psychedelic duck absolutely uh archangel not just yet um we're, we're looking uh at the numbers the infinity council is going to be testing that heavily uh, we want to have that uh, as a finalized concept before we can even look um, at at putting something like that to the live server. Um, I believe right now it's being tested uh, with a maximum of 12, if I'm not mistaken. Looking, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I'm very excited for the advent of sideboards. Uh, it's going to add a lot uh, to our capabilities uh, in terms of not only balancing, but card creation as well. Um, it is currently 2-1. Zonpak Toe uh, has won matches 2 and 3. Nickel Licker won the first match. So th this is going to be... Uh, uh, I I'm expecting this to be a long match, uh, a long, drawn-out, stall versus stall. Um, is that one purify? What are we looking at? Oh, uh, I was just thinking about purify because purify, purify is, is one thing. purity. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I was just thinking because of uh, oblivion. That's um, true. Yeah. That's true. If so he's he, a if he's able to get the, the first one out. Game. Yeah. <laughs> Well, since sanity, uh, uh, stall versus stall isn't always uh, the most exciting, uh, uh, the most exciting match to watch, uh, but it is exciting watching two players who are very aware of their own capabilities uh, fight their own mind games. That's what these decks are. That's what stall is. Uh, it's not about positioning. It's not about aggression. It's about beating your opponent. Okay, so he dark wishes uh, the subjugated dragon. I like that play. Uh, that tells me that he purposefully uh, kept the maximum hand size, got subjugated dragon in the board, and resurrected it um, with dark wish. I like that play. I'm pretty sure it was demonic presence. Was it? Was it presence? I'm fairly certain, yeah. D presence forces him to discard a specific card, doesn't it? Uh, no, Demonic Presence is uh, discard your entire hand. And then draw five. Oh, he played Demonic Presence. I yeah. must have missed that. Okay. I apologize. I thought we were talking about uh, Mind Splinter. No, no, no. I think he just played that. Like, I, I like that play. I like that. That's a lot of pressure. Very. Oh, what? Are you kidding? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Are, you've got to be joking. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Zanpakuto. Zanpakuto, buddy. I am sorry for the hand uh, that Nickel Licker just drew. Wow. Oh. 
fun times ahead. <laughs> Good lord. Two wholesale <laughs> slaughters. Um, he wants to get them out this turn. He's going to have to because of controlled parallel rift. Um, he's going to discard his hand again. Um, so he's not only going to get rid of those two mad monks and the the third wholesale slaughter. Um, oh, oh, why why did he do that? I that was. It. Do you? Yeah, because he wipes the board now. Oh he no 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 no! The the play I'm referring to, I apologize. Uh, is Zanpakuto annihilating controlled parallel? Oh, rift. I definitely agree with that. Do you? Yes. Simply looking at Nickel Licker's hand. Goals. Uh, if, if he left controlled parallel rift out on the field, that would have hurt nickel quite a bit. However, by getting rid of controlled parallel rift, he allowed him to keep a godlike hand. Well, you can't. No, there, can't there's no way for him to have him. known that. There, there's no way for Zanpakuto to have known that. But I'm saying that given the, the current situation, he helped nickel liquor quite a bit. Do you agree with that? Um... Not exactly, just because he already had played the power combo that he had gotten earlier. So, it happened on the same turn. Um, Fair enough. Otherwise, yeah. Like The thing is, though, is he doesn't have another good Annihilate target. So, it was the obvious play to do. W would you have held on to it in that situation? The Annihilate? No. Yeah. No? No, no. Okay. I definitely would have Annihilated that. Okay. It gives so many... Like, if your hand's dead, it fixes it. And, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so he's running off of the assumption that Nickelicker did not have a good hand. And simply, you know, he, he wanted to make sure that he, he held on to that. Whereas the actual situation was such that uh, Nickel Licker had an amazing hand. And by getting rid of Controlled Parallel Rift, Zanpakuto actually helped Nickel Licker quite a bit. And, and of course, like I said, there's no way for Zanpakuto to have known that. It was a stroke of luck. <laughs> it was. It was. It was beautiful timing. Um, and unfortunately for Zanpakuto, that play helped his opponent. He did a nice board wipe of the demons, though. Adora Bear. Hello, my friend. But, yeah, that, that was um, that was a very interesting play. Um, unfortunate for Zanpakuto, uh, because I do agree that annihilating the location uh, was likely his best play. Uh, given this deck that Nickelicker is running, I don't really see uh, another Annihilate target uh, ever being a priority. Um... So Nickel is looking through Zanpakuto's graveyard right now, trying to find a good Purify target. Uh, would you Purify Annihilate in this situation? Definitely not. Okay. I, w I would not have. Um, obviously, you want to wait for Oblivion. Um, but I don't think... Given what I've seen off of Zanpakuto uh, up to this point, I don't believe that uh, Zanpakuto is going to... Uh, simply throw out Oblivion once he has it, if it's not an advantageous play. At this well, point, if he were to throw out Oblivion, uh, he would simply be getting rid of Mad Monk. He would just be left with a 20-20. Um, and we can see that Nickel Licker still has uh, another Wholesale Slaughter in his hand. So I don't see Oblivion uh, being a, a good play right now. No, it's not. But the thing that uh, all Nickel Licker has to do then is he just coasts, he just chills. And if he gets a demonic presence on an oblivion and it's his priority, he purifies it. If not, he just chills up with his hand and just waits for the uh, the uh, mill out. Right. He's, he's 10 morale up. So even if it comes down to them both decking out, he's still going to be one turn ahead. Right. This is the, the, this is a, a very interesting uh, this is a very interesting turn of events. Um, it's not necessarily that this deck has countered three Varor. It's that three Varor in this situation does not have an opportune target. It, it nullifies the capabilities of the deck. Simply, oh, he played two heat waves. He is waiting for Oblivion. Interesting. So, uh, chat, if you saw that, he played two heat waves, uh, understanding that Nickelicker is not going to play out very many characters. Um, in this situation, uh, Heat Wave was in no way meant for the purpose of damaging Mad Monk. It's simply, um, it's simply to place more abilities in his graveyard. And again, the, he, he's doing the exact same thing. He is, he's, he's literally just waiting for Oblivion. Um, 
Sinsanity. Teramis, you guys need to fix the disappearing deck thing. That is very vague. Um, I'm not the one who handles um, bugs. So if you would please ensure that whatever you see uh, goes through the help menu uh, or you email support, we would greatly appreciate it. I'm sure that they're very aware of the bug, uh, but I'm not the one that handles any of that. So if you would please ensure that communication is sent through the proper channels, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. That's a good point, Hart. Uh, Hart says, classic example here, if you're looking for one specific card, draw two, do not shuffle three. Uh, what, what do you make of that, that sentiment, Prozac? He, he's basically saying that it's far more efficient um, if you're searching for something specific to pay five uh, rather than shuffle for three. And I, I agree with that. I just want to hear your thoughts. Um, who was doing it? Somewhere? Uh, Zanpakuto was doing it. He's okay. clearly fishing for Oblivion. Um, I'm assuming he was just shuffling just to maintain uh, deck size in case he actually does end up getting decked out. Otherwise, the draw two is more efficient. But adding more cards to your hand can be an issue when you're trying to uh, just maintain your deck size so you don't deck out before uh, neck. Fair enough. Hmm. Seems very interesting, though. I, I, I like this kind of a, a game. Um, the, this is very clear that, yes, it is stall versus stall, uh, but what we're looking at uh, is two players who are trying to outrace uh, each other's mental games, and I, I really like uh, what I'm seeing here. If this gets back up to 40 resources, this will remind me of Old Roar versus Old Roar. Right. It's a fun time. Right. <laughs> Please, no. No, and, and, and what Crimes just said... Um, it is actually really reminiscent of those days. Exactly. Uh, a, a siphon bomb. No. Siphon no. bombs. No. Siphon bombs were hilarious. Uh, back oh, uh, before that card was was changed just a little bit. Um, and oh, uh, that those siphon Nightmare. bombs, those siphon bombs, man. Those were like you got the fifty resources, and then you both have to play reflective shields to dodge each other's siphon structures. To right, die. right. Those were good times. Right, um, <laughs> Diana, if you are still in here, um, I, I believe what they're noticing with the deck disappearing bug. Um, if you look at Nickel Licker's deck, it is clearly below uh, the deck ground texture on the Warpath Sanctuary battlefield. Um, obviously. I don't handle the bugs, but if that's not already uh, documented, can we please make sure that's uh, sent over to, I believe, Jordan? Appreciate it. That's true. Uh, graveyard removal might do a little bit here, uh, simply to stall Oblivion, but what is stalling Oblivion going to accomplish uh, for Nickel? Unless I'm mistaken... Uh, what's going to happen is Zanpakuto is simply um, going to uh, morale out uh, simply by deck. You know, he, he's going to deck out, and uh, it's going to take six turns for that to happen, given Zanpakuto's current uh, morale level. So th this is uh, going to take a little bit longer, but I'm interested to see if Zanpakuto is able to pull out any kind of offensive. But at this point, I'm estimating a Nickel Licker win. Uh, most likely, unless he draws absolutely horrifically once the Oblivion's played, like when he has to dump his hand. Right. If he just gets no answers to the 2020 at all for four turns, which is unlikely. Otherwise, yeah, I definitely think Nick just wins. Right. Uh, I'm definitely lo looking at a Nickel Licker win here, um, and that's going to tie up the series uh, at 2-2 for a fifth match, and that's uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be excited to see how they, how they respond to a match like this. Don't worry about it, Buffalox. It was just instructions for Shimisaurus, that's all. <laughs> And it, it, we, we can see it's actually not, not happening no, for a <laughs> controlled parallel rift here, which is interesting. So, the, so there's Oblivion. Oblivion comes out and will get rid uh, of absolutely nothing. 
other than the location, the hand. Um, again, this would be interesting if we could see uh, deck size, but now it doesn't matter because the deck is gone. Uh, oh. Zanpakuto is out of cards. We we've hit that point. Um, uh, that's game. The wholesale. Yep. yep the whole. Game. The wholesale slaughter took care uh, of demon from oblivion. So I I am I'm fully expecting a nickel liquor win here. I do not believe Zanpakuto has anything at this point. Thank you, Shumi. I appreciate that. That was uh, so something I, I'm not sure if, if, if many people saw, uh, but that was an absolutely perfect read by Nickel Licker. He, he called that that turn on Zanpakuto's initiative would be the turn that he would play Oblivion. And he allowed Oblivion to come out first, and then Wholesale Slaughter to come out and take care of the demon from Oblivion, essentially leaving Zanpakuto with zero answers or responses for anything. He now has a Purify in his hand and can Purify out the Oblivion. That was an absolutely amazing read. Um, that's that's just incredible. To, to be able to call this is the turn uh, that Zanpakuto will play Oblivion. Uh, notice that uh, Zanpakuto has the initiative and Wholesale Slaughter will go off second. Uh, Nickel Licker secured his win just from that read. Although from the cards he redrew, it would have still ended up more, largely the same way, but yeah. Very so impressive. Have... Wait. And he pulls out another <laughs> wholesale slaughter. My god. Uh, I was going to say, if he had actually no cards left, I believe it would actually have tied. But no, he has he has tons of cards. Yep. They're just, they're just appearing out of nowhere. So the, is, there's, there's the, the Purify. Right here. Yeah. Yep. The, there, <laughs> there's, the, going nowhere. Yeah, there's the Purify on Oblivion. Uh, that's going to be game. Zanpakuto is now locked down. Wholesale Slaughter comes out and takes care of the Oblivion Demon. Uh, that's... That's... That, that, that's game. That's... <laughs> uh, Nickel Licker. That was very impressive. Um, Prozac, this goes back to something you called uh, before we even started watching this match. Nickel Licker is going to be able to read the board state. He will understand what is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And he literally just called out, I am saying Zanpakuto right now on this turn is going to Oblivion. He has initiative. My wholesale slaughter is going to take out his demon. Let's do this. And it worked. It worked out in his favor. That secured the win right there. Uh, GG, Nickel Licker, and Zanpak Toe. Uh, the, the, the BO5 is now at 2-2. Two -two, so we are going to move to a fifth match. That was very impressive. Um, let, let's talk about whether or not we think he's going to switch decks uh, again for the fifth match. We're I seeing it right don't here. Think so. What Wait. is what is this? Is what me? in the world is oh, this? this? Yeah, buddy. This oh, do it. We saw it against, please uh, do it. The Shikana Rush deck, please. <laughs> oh, this is good. Do it. Do yeah, it. It's specifically good against like uh, Soul and shit. Or the angels. Oh, I, if he selects this deck, I'm going to be all of the hype. <laughs> I am going to be so many different... Oh, no, please don't switch back to that. That's what I would expect, first. I, I, I honestly would expect him to use this. Um, oh, he's changing his deck. What's he doing here? Should be interesting. That would be a good idea. If he puts that, uh, okay. yeah, he's yeah, going he to put in consecration. Huh? Yeah, he he's putting in consecration yeah. specifically for Veroria. Um, and, and the in, in the rules uh, I did stipulate, he is allowed to change his deck, uh, however he wants. Uh, so he specifically added consecration, uh, as 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 a response to Veroria, the Lone Keep. Uh, and this is what um. The, this is what sideboards will be able to do. Is he using that deck? Uh, 
I'll be very interested in this fifth match. Remember, everyone, this is the final match. This is it for all the marbles. All right. So he is sticking with his Bionic Soul deck. I, I would have been all of the hype if he switched to that Flamed on Chicana deck. Um, so again, this final match is between Bionic Soul and uh, Zanpakuto's uh, three, three Varor deck. So let's see who takes this match. Uh, Prozac, uh, predictions on this matchup uh, a third time. After the Consecrations, I'm expecting Nick to win. Okay. Bast? Um... I'm matching it for Zampito if he can stall out long enough and uh, dodge the uh, consecrate. Well, no, he won't be able to. I don't know. It really depends. It really depends how everything goes. Right. Absolutely. No, uh, mysterious. That that's correct. the The point is, um, if if Zanpakuto wins this match, that's the end of the tournament. Um, that was really good. Wow, that was fast. That was really fast. Um, for anyone who didn't see that again, that was the same play he did earlier uh, in the BO5 where he CTA'd Soul to dodge Annihilate. Um, oh, and, Anni and a second Annihilate comes out. All right, that's, fine. That, that's actually fine because uh, he uses he uses Soul uh, to bait out two Annihilates. So understanding now that there's only one Annihilate left in Zanpakuto's deck, that was worth I would definitely say that was worth. Um, but back to what I was saying. If Zanpakuto wins this match, that's the end of the tournament. Um, if Nickel Licker wins this match, they have to play a second series. Because double elimination. So, uh, I, I'm seeing the same kind of play out of Nickel Licker here uh, that I generally do. And I like it. I really do like it. Um, oh, excuse me. Yeah. We're good. Um, oh, okay, so he has Consecration in his hand now. Uh, so he, he not only has Precautionary Measures, um, he has uh, two Zealous Defenders. Uh, oh, a third. Is that a second or a third Guns Goliath? I believe third. that's his third. That's third? third. All right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I like I it. I expect him to pull them back. Yeah. I like it. I like this. So, Zanpakuto, yeah, I, I need more caffeine, Archangel. Absolutely. Uh, Desolation would actually do him zero good here. Zero good. They all have six health. Pepsi in no way freshens my breath. Makes my I breath he's stank. If he loses two of those swarmers, he's going to do enough damage to right. take him out. Right, right. So he yeah. just needs to lose one more swarmer. Everything's down to one. Uh, Luca will buff it a little bit. Uh, they'll be able to survive two swarmers or a heat wave. Uh, and it's really important that it was the Luca and not the guns. Right. Because it's on Zombacto's prior priority. Right. So Luca still go off, which is really, really nice right now. Uh, do, do you think Nickel planned it out that way? You know, he played Guns of Goliath on his initiative, waited to play Luca on Zanpakuto's initiative. I would hope so. If you yeah. Did, that'd be pretty disappointed. Re re really smart playing. And uh, again, that that's uh, using turn order to his benefit. So any newbies uh, in the channel, this is this is how high levels of play go. Uh, understanding that on Nickel Licker's initiative, he played Guns of Goliath. It doesn't even matter now. Uh, too many heat waves. Uh, but he played against Goliath when he had initiative, understanding that abilities will go off after character play. So once Zanpakuto had initiative, he'll play Ascended Luka. That way the character ability goes off before uh, spells and abilities in the second portion of the resolution phase. So Ascended Luka would have gone off before Guns of Goliath uh, or Heat Wave or Desolation or anything of the kind. So at this point, there there is really no uh, tempo swing in either direction. Uh, we're basically just waiting to see who can gain control of this. Well, uh, the important thing is he has the consecration and the uh, precautionary measures in his, uh, measures in his hand. Right. For the at minimum a fifty fifty gamble of if uh, Zanpakuto mass tests or not on the turn, he does those. 
True. And he's also able to to literally set his own uh, window of opportunity up. Mm-hmm. So he can say that if my opponent does in fact have Verori the lone the lone keep out on the field, uh, I can give myself a window of opportunity and say uh, my opponent has initiative. I'm going to uh, play consecration on Veroria and uh, be able to give myself a window to attack through to his fortress, no matter what he does. Uh, Dark Wish comes out and takes care of Ascended Luca. Uh, that leaves Splitterbot and 18 damage to Zanpakuto's fortress. Uh, and Zealous Defender will survive uh, the two Warp Swarmers. Shuffles away Wealthy Noble, brings up a Banish. Gonna banish away a Wealthy Noble? Okay. Huh. Interesting. I, I would have waited to play I, that Banish. Yeah. I, I would have saved there, it. I'm, yeah. actually, I'm actually questioning the Zealous Protector earlier on more so than anything. Really? Dro- dropping the Swarmers to one doesn't accomplish anything, and he's just, yeah, like, kind of like that. It didn't really do anything. It just cost him another morale target. Right. I also don't agree with that mass death play. I think that was too soon. Uh, if he has I think he was one, expecting. I think he was expecting Nickelicker to be a little bit more aggressive, uh, but as we've seen throughout this Bo Five, Nickelicker has been anything but aggressive. Is that enough? No, it's not. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's not enough. Mm. Again, th- this is where spectating would be wonderful because I would absolutely love to see the amount of characters. Yeah. I uh, feel like it might actually be enough. Otherwise, this is a really mm-hmm. weird play. Oh, oh! oh yeah, there's oh. the second mass death, yeah. <laughs> and it was enough. I oh, the, the, the mass <laughs> the, the mass death baits. That was actually really important, though, because he just lost his graveyard, which hampers his other precautionary. Right. So he has to play for a slightly longer game now. That was... Uh... The, the the mass death follow up is is best follow up. The 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 best combinations is two mass death. Yeah, because otherwise the first mass death was really questionable. But if he had the second like he did, then it's perfectly fine. Right. Yeah, chat. Yep, some of you did call it. I like it. I like it. So gather thoughts comes out. Um, I'm going to expect he pulled a mass death back into his deck. Angel of Virtue, not really going to do very much for him right now. Um, uh, second, con- ooh, a second Angel of Virtue. I I think <coughs> Zambato might have this because I actually don't think so. I mm. feel like the precautionary is going to make the big difference. Yeah, two mass deaths are already down. Yeah, I I feel like Nickel Licker. Uh, has a slight advantage in capability at this time. I feel like uh, Zanpakuto does not have the ability to get Oblivion out at this time, and Nickelicker is going to be able to deal 56 faster than Zanpakuto can reach for Oblivion. At least that's what I'm feeling. Um, he has uh, Consecration, two Consecrations in his hand. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I don't necessarily feel... Um, like Zanpakuto is going to be able to stop uh, Nickel Licker's aggression in the next two to three turns. The key, yeah, it's literally just going to come down to a 50-50 gamble again when he decides to do the precautionary. That's going to really decide this game. If the next one fails, it will be game. That was very interesting. Um, we just saw Zanpakuto uh, against this Bionic Soul deck rather than uh, the, the FD Mill deck. Calamity! calamity a little early uh and i feel like that's actually going to allow zanpakuto uh uh or that's actually going to allow nickel liquor to gain a little bit more uh tempo right now he's going to continue drawing uh into the overseer's rush and i think at this point zanpakuto is just stalling that's all he can do he's not setting up for anything he's just stalling and trying to fish for oblivions Interesting. Is this, does he have enough? I got... He... No. No, I, I don't... I still don't think it's enough. Again, spectating would be wonderful here because I'd love to see how many characters uh, uh, are in Nickel's graveyard. <laughs> uh, 
No, um, uh, uh, chat, allow me to clarify. Calamity was not a terrible play there. Um, I'm simply uh, fishing for the motivations behind what Zanpakuto might be doing. Uh, at this point, his motivations purely are to fish for the capability to play out Oblivion. Yeah, it's getting very late into the game, and um, the Oblivion play... Oh, zero mass death. Okay, good good oh. bait by Nickel. Good bait. Uh, mass death was completely okay. dodged. Heaven's yeah. Assistance, <laughs> Precautionary Measures, Angel of Virtue, and Luca. Um, however... I believe Zanpakuto may have enough abilities in his graveyard now to play Oblivion. Uh, and Nickel is clearly sensing uh, that it's either Oblivion comes out now or Nickel wins. That's what's going to happen this turn. This turn will decide it. Zanpakuto either plays Oblivion or Nickel wins. I believe he has enough power uh, for that purpose. That and, 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 awesome. and again, if... If Zanpakuto has Oblivion, uh, Nickelicker must sense that at this point, Oblivion will either shut him down entirely because of what he already has on the board, uh, or he wins. That's where this turn's going. Let's see what happens. Bast, what do you make of this turn? It's a real 50-50 chance. <laughs> this is a really... Uh big gamble to do right now at this point in the game. Absolutely. Very late into the game against three Varor, uh, and committing to the board, uh, you know, after turn six against three Varor is always a risk. Always a risk. Let's see what he's able to to do here. Uh, yeah, this turn does decide the game one way or the other. Yeah, because I'm, I'm fairly certain that, you know, precautionary measures is going to afford him enough power. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> so, recycling Mass Death, Heat Waves, Dark Wish in order to draw, what? Lightning what? Blast on a Luka. Why did he put the candy there? Oh. <sighs> I don't understand why he would even <sighs> oh, swing that's... to the Fortress. I, I don't understand why he would swing to the uh, Fortress okay. there. Okay. Well, yeah, that should have been things when he randomly put the... I don't... Okay. That that turn was a, a little. I lost my words. Yeah, that turn was a little <laughs> poorly played on Zanpakuto's part. Um, he could have positioned his characters better. Uh, he could have positioned his abilities a little better uh, for who he was targeting and why. Uh, but there, the, there, there was enough power from precautionary measures to take Zanpakuto out. Um, and that he didn't is now. Have oblivion either. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So, um, so that is now. Uh, the first BO5 series uh, from Nickel Licker and Zanpakuto.